The Bene Gesserit, a mystical sisterhood that appears to be organised around religious lines, are the power behind what becomes the ultimate evolutionary paradigm in the Dune series, the Kwisatz Haderach. The Bene Gesserit are until the times following the end of Leto II's reign and the scattering, deeply conscientious of adhering to the prescriptions put in place by the Great Convention following the Butlerian Jihad. As such, they have created a breeding program that could again be seen as a mirror to that of the patriarchal Bene Tleilax. The Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, however, in line with the Great Convention, do not use genetic techniques of biological technologies such as artificial insemination or genetic engineering. The crux of their millennia long breeding program is in fact by means of artificial selection, selecting and breeding individuals of specific noble houses and bloodlines patiently for thousands of years in the desire to create a Kwisatz Haderach. The culmination of this program is to create a male Bene Gesserit that they can control. The Bene Gesserit are one of the key schools of physical mental training developed out of the necessities following the Butlerian Jihad and although they deceptively maintain the image of a matriarchal religious order, their true focus is politics. The structure of the sisterhood is made up of acolytes, reverend mothers, and follows the leadership of an elected individual known as the Mother Superior. The sisterhood has members dedicated to producing children as part of their breeding program, and many notable factions, including the Emperor and the Houses of the Landsrat, use the Bene Gesserit to procure wives or concubines, this in itself serving the needs of their breeding program. Jessica, the bound concubine of Duke Leto, for example, was ordered by the sisterhood to produce only female children to the Atreides. It is her disobedience to this edict that brings about the creation of a Kwisatz Saderach in Paul Atreides one generation early. Similarly, the Emperor Shaddam IV has sired five daughters at the Bene Gesserit's command, and despite his strong desire to produce a male heir, something that is easily within the Bene Gesserit's power to allow, this never happens. The physical mental development that the Bene Gesserit have perfected over the millennia includes prana and bindu training, which allows them to manipulate and control every nerve and muscle in their own bodies, even allowing them to physically adjust at the moment of conception the sex of their children. Prana Bindu training allows the Bene Gesserit to take control of their bodies in a manner that is carried to the last possible notch permitted by natural function. This training also facilitates another of the Bene Gesserit's developed abilities, namely those of the voice and the weirding way. The voice, a concept obviously influenced by Alfred Korzybski's theory of general semantics, is described as that combined training originated by the Bene Gesserit which permits an adept to control others merely by selected tone shadings of the voice. Voice allows control over an individual's subconscious, providing of course they have the ability to hear, though continued exposure to its use can allow individuals to build up a resistance to it. Those trained in its ways are also not susceptible to its influences. The weirding way is a means of battle similar to a martial art that combines prana bindu training and the use of voice. Both Paul and his mother Jessica are trained in this way of battle, and it is these skills that make the Fremen see their worth and allow them to join their tribe rather than take their water. As a Bene Gesserit acolyte develops their prana bindu training to such a heightened degree, there comes a time when they must undertake the ritual known as the Spice Agony, in order to become fully fledged Reverend Mothers. This at its very essence is when an acolyte takes the poisonous water of life, made from the bile of a newly drowned sand trout, or Little Maker as they are known amongst the Fremen. The Bene Gesserit undertaking the Spice Agony must realise that the water of life is in fact a poison and adjust it at a molecular level using their prana bindu training in order to make the deadly bile safe. If they are unsuccessful, they suffer an agonising death. It is forbidden for a Bene Gesserit to take the water of life when pregnant, as it creates what is known as an abomination. An abomination is a child who is born fully aware and possessing other memory 
due to the process of becoming a Reverend Mother being passed on to the offspring in the womb while taking the poisonous water of life. More often than not, this leads to terrible madness due to the horde of personalities contained in other memory vying for prominence over the individual's own personality. This occurs to Paul's sister Alia, whose mind is taken over interestingly enough by the memory personality of the deceased Baron Harkonnen, her maternal grandfather. Upon successfully changing the poisonous water of life, an acolyte has in fact become a full reverend mother, this change giving them access to the special ability of other memory, a form of collective unconscious and genetic memory that is specifically limited to the female sex. At the point of death or prior to an event that may result in a reverend mother's death, they are also able to pass on their memories to the collective whole by sharing their memory with another member of the sisterhood. In dire circumstances, the sisterhood can facilitate a mass sharing in order to preserve the memories of a large group of Bene Gesserit who face imminent peril. This is known as Extremis Progressiva, and is used in Chapter House Dune when the Bene Gesserit planet of Lampadas faces destruction at the hands of the Honoured Matres. It is of such importance to the Bene Gesserit that their Bashar, Miles Teg, is prepared to hold off the enemy for as long as possible in order to allow the escape of Lucilla, the lone reverend mother who carries these collective memories. Millions of memory lives, all concentrated in what the sisterhood called Extremis Progressiva, 2x2 then 4x4 and 16x16, until each held all of them and any survivor could preserve the precious accumulation. What they were doing in Mother Superior's suite had some of that flavour, the concept no longer terrified Mirabella, but it was not yet ordinary. Odrad's words comforted. Once you have fully accommodated to the bundles of other memory, all else falls into a perspective that is utterly familiar, as though you had known it always. Mirabella recognised that Teg was prepared to die in defence of this multiple awareness that was the sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit. Lucilla later faces capture at the hands of the honoured Matres on Gamu, and is able to hide for a while amongst a group of Jews, despite putting them at great risk. She knows they will ultimately be forced to turn her over to the honoured Matres and able to ensure their survival, but strikes a deal which allows her to share the collective memories of the sisterhood from Lampadas with a wild reverend mother of the Jews, called Rebecca. Lucilla is turned over after the sharing, and Rebecca is able to return the Lampada's horde as it becomes known to the sisterhood. Rebecca is of particular interest here in the development of the Bene Gesserit, as she is a naturally evolved Reverend Mother with the capabilities of other memory, and as such has become so without the need of years of training or the spice agony. The Reverend Mothers of the Sisterhood possess other abilities, which include the development of truthsayers and imprinters. Truthsayers are trained to observe tone, inclination and body language of a given individual by observing minutiae to an incredible degree, noting the slightest change in an individual's physiological or mental state. The Bene Gesserit's imprinters are able to control an individual using Prana Bindu techniques and a honed set of skills focused around seduction. The Bene Gesserit represent a heightened form of human being, where the advantages of their seemingly advanced state of existence are fundamentally as a result of cultured training developed over thousands of years. Generally, the greater abilities that the Bene Gesserit possess, like most of the disparate groups of the Imperium, are reliant on the drug Melange. The character of Rebecca is indicative that the nature of the Bene Gesserit is about to follow an evolutionary shift, her being a wild Reverend Mother, who seemingly has a natural predilection for the most prized of the sisterhood's talents, that of other memory. The Bene Gesserit themselves are one of the sources that create the Honoured Matres, the other being the God Emperor's Fish Speaker Army. These groups left the Imperium at the time of the scattering, and it is their return as the Honoured Matres that seemingly posed the greatest threat to the former Imperium at the time of events in Heretics of Dune and Chapter House Dune. The Bene Gesserit's ability to delve into the realms of other memory is seemingly their greatest advantage, 
providing them with a store of memories and experiences of most of the women that came before them, going back thousands of years. They can combine this with their talent for what is known as simuflow, where they are able to probe the experiences and opinions of several personalities from within their other memory simultaneously. The purpose of the Sisterhood's great patience and toil, their millennia long breeding program, is to create the Kwisatz Haderach. This ultimately enables them to gain access and to control the male line of other memory. When an acolyte goes through the spice agony, viewing in the mind's eye the multitude of personalities contained therein, there is a place inside that they cannot look, and is a source of terror and uncertainty for them. Only the Kwisatz Sadarak may look there. Unfortunately for them, by accident and an act of disobedience, the Sisterhood loses control of their breeding program. When the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohiam tests Paul at the beginning of June, she asks him if he knows of the drug that the Bene Gesserit takes to determine truth. The drug's dangerous, she said, but it gives insight. When a truth sayer is gifted by the drug, she can look many places in her memory, in her body's memory. We look down so many avenues of the past, but only feminine avenues. Her voice took on a note of sadness. Yet there's a place where no truth sayer can see. We are repelled by it. Terrorised. It is said a man will come one day and find in the gift of the drug his inward eye. He will look where we cannot, into both feminine and masculine pasts. Your Kwisatz Haderach? Yes, the one who can be many places at once, the Kwisatz Haderach. Many men have tried the drug, so many, but none has succeeded. <laughs>